the actual violence. Let me just show you a few examples. Do you remember the census worker who died? This guy, this guy died, and there was a sign, and I, I don't remember what it said, census worker or government, something or other. The, the, the left immediately tried to frame this killing as a crazy right-winger um, uh, death squad, led by me. They blamed it on me. Some actual credible organizations said, look out, this is going to lead right back to Glenn Beck. Turns out it was a suicide. No one has apologized to me. The whack job who flew the plane into an IRS building. The media once again tried to paint this guy as a right winger. But reading his manifesto clearly showed the guy was probably a communist. It was a liberal who bit off the finger of an opponent uh, at an, uh, a health reform uh, uh, debate with, uh, with, uh, on Obama's health reform. It was SEIU thugs who beat down a health care opponent. This video, an African-American, was called the N-word for handing out material, and then the SEIU thugs beat him down. Do you remember the broken windows MSNBC was showing? In Denver. Here it is. The media was quick to report that DNC headquarters were attacked by Republicans until it turned out that it was a Democrat who did it. Then, somehow or another, the story lost all traction and nobody paid attention to this. At the G20 in Pittsburgh, far-left protesters started vandalizing. Tens of thousands of dollars of damage. Look at this. Far-left. I didn't hear any coverage on this. The far-left activist group ELF burned up Hummers and SUVs last summer. We were the only ones that reported that the left blew up a radio station tower to stop a radio station from being on the air. That happened in Seattle. Why weren't they concerned about that? The far-left activist group trying to save the whales has a television show where they actually are attacking and damaging whaling ships. That's terror, eco-terror. Obama's buddies, Bill Ayers, Jeff Jones, running around setting off bombs in the 1960s at places like the Pentagon. They're actual terrorists. They're domestic terrorists and unrepentant. How about Amy Bishop this summer? She shot and killed some of her coworkers. What did the press find out about her? The day the story stopped, that she was a radical Obama supporter. Then that story just disappeared. It was a liberal who uh, brought bombs to the GOP convention in 2008. I know it's Canada, but look what's happening to Ann Coulter in Canada. She had to cancel her speech there because Canadians were so concerned about her hate speech that they resorted to intimidation and threats of violence to make her cancel it. They surrounded a building with sticks and rocks. I'm pretty sure it wasn't conservatives who did that one. And I know it's ancient history because, I mean, we all have to pause a minute and go, you have to dig back way in your memory bank and go all the way back to the days of President George W. Bush. The press so wanted to show how hated he was that they couldn't wait to show pictures like these. It's an effigy of him. There he is hanging. Now, can we please roll the tape of Nancy Pelosi crying in 2004 because she was so worried about another act of violence on President Bush? We can't because it doesn't exist. It's almost like the left is trumping all of this up just for the politics of it all. Listen to the language in this article from the Daily Mail. Americans who suggest Barack Obama should rot in hell are apparently deadly serious. You got it? They're deadly serious. Nearly a quarter of Republicans believe the Democratic president may be the Antichrist. Now, that's James Cameron. I pointed that out last night. An even greater number compared him to Hitler. Oh, if they really believe that, gee, what are those crazy Republicans capable of? But wait, there's more. They aren't just regular Republicans. No, no, they're religious wackos as well. Mr. Obama was jubilant this week after securing his health care reform plan. But his triumph only seems to have inflamed his critics among the evangelical Christians from America's heartland who kept George Bush in power for eight years and then demonized his successor. You got it? His critics are inflamed. 
They're religious kooks. They're from the heartland. And they'll do anything. Here's the best part. 67% of Republicans who responded believe Obama was a socialist, despite his central leanings. His, his central lean? He's a centrist? Look how they're rewriting history already. I mean, Time Magazine couldn't even find pictures of the Tea Partiers when they wrote the year in pictures. No pictures of the Tea Party movement. You were erased. They did the same thing with FDR. It, he was the closest thing this country ever had to a dictator, and progressives have turned him into a hero. His body wasn't even cold yet, and Congress passed term limits. Why? If everybody loved him, why? Woodrow Wilson, historians look back on him fondly. He was a racist. He, the Nazis learned propaganda from the Wilson administration. America, you're being set up. And it is only a matter of time before an actual crazy person really does something stupid. But don't you give up on the truth. And don't you forget, you think of Martin Luther King and Gandhi. These losers in the 1960s couldn't get a revolutionary, uh, revolution started, so they came up with a new way. Oh, they came up with a new way. But Martin Luther King did it the right way. Peace. Gandhi did it the right way. Peace. We will continue to do it the right way. Peace. God forbid something happens. There's going to be a news story, and it won't be about a single crazy person. No, no, no. The narrative is being presented to the American people. The groundwork is being laid. We won't get the benefit of the doubt like Martin Luther King did when you had Malcolm X. America has a centrist, normal, red, white, and blue president, and Congress, oh, well, they're just up against a, a bunch of crazy, radical, Tea Party, violent freaks ready to attack at any moment. Sarah Palin told them to do it, you know. Barack Obama said he wouldn't use the fear of politics like George W. Bush did. America, I have to tell you, this, this man has violated every single campaign promise he's made, except those to the labor unions. This is the big one, because that's exactly what he's doing now. He is breaking the one that really America really wanted to stop. Just do anything for politics. That's the change we wanted. And here he is, using the politics of fear to rally his base. I don't know about you. I am so excited. I mean, every American is on the verge of having everlasting life on Earth with perfect health in perpetuity. Okay, maybe a slight exaggeration, but slight, really slight. Just about that much. Hopes are high, though, right? I mean, this is the president who promised us this. Because if we are willing to work for it <gasps> and fight for it what does he mean by fight? and believe in it, then I am absolutely certain that generations from now, we will be able to look back and tell our children that this was the moment when we began to provide care for the sick and good jobs to the jobless. This was the moment when the rise of the oceans began to slow and our planet began to heal. Planet began. Wow. Wow. Thank you, O Messiah. Sounds great. Unfortunately, it's not working out that way. Remember the days back when this guy told us unemployment would top out at 8% tops? Yeah. Kind of wrong on that one. Our country is under constant pressure. And despite the soaring promises of health care, Americans feel it. The latest Fox News, show, uh, Fox News poll shows this. Is it possible for the nation's economy to collapse? 79% say yes. I, as somebody who said this has been coming for about five years, I'm telling you, these numbers five years ago were not like this. I bet they were reversed. 18%, no, it never could. You people are insane. You think the economy could collapse? 78% say yeah. 